Yo, Kay! I'm going to my parents' house. What? From now? Didn't you tell me that you need to work overtime and we'll be home around 10 p.m.? Yeah, I'm going after that. Why? Did something happen? I totally forgot that tomorrow's my middle school reunion. Reunion? Yeah. Since it's going to start around noon, I'm going to meet up with my friend an hour before. I forgot to buy train tickets. Plus, I don't think that there are going to be any night buses around the time I get home. How about taking the first train in the morning? Nope. Can't make it on time. So I decided to take the car. Are you serious? You're planning to drive without sleeping? That's very dangerous. Exactly. So that's why you're driving. Huh? Me? Do you have a problem? I'm pretty sure that you're just laying around the house since you're on maternity leave now. So you should have no problem with this. You can take a rest and nap when we get there. So that you can drive us back home. Wait, I'm going to drive back home also? What are you talking about? I'll be drinking at the reunion, so I can't drive. Can we please take the train back home at least? Huh? What about the car? We can't just leave it at my parents' house. Wait, hold on. Didn't I tell you that I have terrible nausea due to pregnancy? I can't move that much either because my baby bump is getting bigger. Are you still going to make me drive? Okay, well, excuses, excuses. All you do is lay around the house all day. I lie down because I feel sick. Isn't that the same thing as doing nothing? Well, I work every day for you, so it's your job to drive. Since when? Well, I have terrible nausea, so there's no way I'm driving. Stop being so dramatic. You know how they say that drivers don't get motion sickness? Yeah, so you should be okay. Are you kidding me? Be there in five. What? Kate, are you serious? It's not even an hour and you decide to pull over at the drive-in to go to the bathroom? You're so dramatic. <sighs> The smell of the car made me nauseous. Wow. Well, I'm in the back seat lying down and trying to sleep. So hurry your ass up! Kate! Where the hell are we? Did you seriously go to the bathroom again? If you keep on stopping, we can't make it on time. Let's take the highway. It's faster. Are you kidding me? There are no bathrooms at the highway. Plus, I'm sick, so I'll definitely cause an accident, so the answer is no. <sighs> Seriously? Again? I'm looking at Google Maps, and looks like we only traveled one-fourth. What the hell? Let me guess. You probably parked the car a few times and took a rest while I was sleeping, right? Are you for real? Why don't you drive then since you were sleeping? I'm tired. Wow, all you do is complain. Please, don't use the pregnancy excuse again. Get a grip. I have an idea. How about taking a pill for motion sickness? Please tell me that you're kidding. What is wrong with you? Yeah, yeah, okay. Please, hurry up! I want to take a nap again. Kate! Again? Really? If you keep on stopping, it's going to take forever! You know what? I've had it with your bathroom breaks and all the excuses. I will drive myself there. This doesn't mean that you can go home. 
Feel free to use any transportation to go to my parents' house. But be there by the end of the reunion. Scott? Did you leave me? There's literally no one here. Hi, Anne. Sorry for texting you late at night. You probably are sleeping, but please reply if you see this message. I was heading for your house with Scott, but, but he left me at a drive through in. I don't feel good. I'm about to pass out. Uh, Kate? Oh my god, are you okay? What happened? Hold on, I'm going to contact the people there to see what happened. Scott, you better not be planning on going to the reunion. Where the hell are you? Oh, hey, sis. Why? Oh, come on. I'm hella excited to meet with my friends. You're such a bummer. I heard that you made Kate drive and even planned on making her drive all the way here in that condition. She's pregnant. Are you for real? Oh, about that. She made the pregnancy excuse because she didn't want to drive. Which is bullshit. So that's why I left her. What? Left her? Why did you do that? Um, because I can make it to the house on time? Plus, there's transportation she can take? Wait, how do you know about this? Is she there already? She was carried to the hospital. Why? Stress. It's your fault. Huh? I reached out to the place where you left her and they asked me for help. They said a pregnant woman fainted so we had to call the ambulance. After the call, Dad and I rushed to the hospital. Oh snap. Really? You don't understand how bad her condition is, do you? Um, is it that bad? Last year, there was a co-worker of mine who was pregnant but came to work. People have different kinds of pain when it comes to being pregnant. Kate is suffering from the worst pain possible. Oh. I can't believe that you forced her to get up and made her drive. She was crying and was saying that she had no choice but to drive because she wanted to protect the baby. She definitely needs to be hospitalized until she gives birth. Do you not know what you could have done to her and the unborn child? I just didn't want to be late to the reunion. I heard that you also put the blame on her for not buying the train ticket. Yeah, but she's my wife. So isn't it normal for her to support me? Yes, but don't you know that there's a limit? You just sent your wife to the hospital. Are you stupid enough to not know why? What hospital is Kate at? Why should I tell you? Um... Because she's my wife? Stress can affect the baby, you know. So, no. I will not let you see her until she is okay. Or, or maybe you won't be able to see her forever. Who knows? This is so wrong. Oh, I already told everyone, including her parents about this, by the way. What? Everyone is pissed at you. Why did you do that? Now you understand why I told you to forget about the reunion, right? Come home right this minute! Oh my god, please help me! Kate's planning to divorce me! And? There's a rumor going on about Kate being taken to the hospital and how it's my fault! Everyone is giving me the cold shoulder. If I divorce Kate, my plan to show everyone that I'm a good father will be useless! Wow. What? Are you not realizing that this is the reason Kate wants a divorce? Speaking about divorce, we will have a family meeting about it after she gives birth and gets settled. Keep in mind that no one is going to be on your side. You're not gonna help me? Of course not. Why? Are you stupid enough to not know why? Can you tell me? You have a brain. Why don't you use it? I really don't know. 
Wow, really? Come on, please! No, actually, you know what? I am so fed up with you, so don't ever contact me again. Bye. No! Please! Hello? So after a month after I gave birth, I found out that Scott was cheating on me and even had the nerve to bring her home. Scott's dad found out about this and forced him to sign the divorce papers. I demanded compensation from him and the girl, plus Anne made him pay child support. I heard from Anne later on that the reason why he didn't want a divorce was because I make good money. He was after my money. <sighs> That explains why he was disrespectful to me. About his job, he was transferred to a small local company, making all the payments with the support from his mom, who's taking care of his salary. Today, he's working, bearing the cold shoulders he's getting. <laughs> Hi, Alan. You're free this Saturday, aren't you? Even if you have plans that day, they can be cancelled or rescheduled, right? Why are you messaging me out of nowhere? Why do you do this? What's wrong with messaging you? I can contact you anytime I want. I'm your mother. Anyways, tell me if you're free or not this Saturday. Are you or are you not available? I'm not available. Why are you asking me about Saturday? What? You're not free? Then cancel the plans you already have. They're not that important, are they? You can at least reschedule them, right? No, sorry. I can't cancel or reschedule my plans. They're important. How dare you speak like that to your mother? I don't think I said anything rude. All I said was that I can't go because I already have plans that can't be rescheduled. You can't just make me change my plans out of nowhere without even telling me the reason why you want me to be free on Saturday. What's happening on Saturday anyways? Why is it so important that you want me to change my plans? Your elder brother, Ian, is coming back home from New York. We're so excited to see him. I miss him so much. I want the house to be clean and tidy for when he comes back, so I want you to do all the cleaning. Oh, okay, so Ian is coming back. Good for you. I know you miss him. You talk about him all the time. But can't you do the cleaning yourself? I don't even live there. Why do I have to do the cleaning? Though I can imagine the house is a huge mess right now. You and dad are just so bad at keeping the place clean. You know what, Alan? Unlike your successful brother, you lack empathy. You need to think more about how your words might affect others before you speak. Our house is a huge mess. That's a horrible assumption to make. Plus, why should we spend money to hire a housekeeper? You should be lending us a hand instead of making us use money on something that you could do for free. Don't make such a stupid suggestion. That would be a waste of money. Just be a good boy for once and come clean up the house on Saturday before your brother gets here. Why do you have to be the one to clean it if you don't want to hire a housekeeper? Then do your best to clean the house yourselves. I have work. I have my own life to live. I don't have time to be cleaning your house just so that it's clean when Ian gets there. You mean you're a pathetic job that didn't even require you to have a degree? You're saying you're busy because of that job? <laughs> job? <laughs> That's the important thing that you think you can't reschedule? I'm sure missing a day of work won't be such a problem for the kind of job you have. Hey, don't say that, Mom. The reason I ended up not going to college is because you and Daddy didn't want me to go. I said I wanted to go to university, but you told me that you're not paying for the tuition even though you paid for Ian's. Why do I have to pay for my own tuition when Ian doesn't have to? That's just not fair. Well, obviously, we were not going to pay for your tuition. You only got average grades in high school. Why should we pay tuition for you? But Ian, he had a 4.0 in high school. He is worth putting money into, but not you. You should have studied harder in high school if you really wanted to go to university. But not only that, you made me work to pay for Ian's tuition. You didn't even let me choose the job I wanted. How job I wanted? How dare you make me work to pay for Ian's tuition? That's just not fair. There's absolutely no justifying that. 
That was for you, though, Alan. Your school counselor said you should get a head start on working if you weren't going to go to college. And we thought that that would be the best option for you, too. We only did what was best for you. Anyways, you're the one who stopped me from going to university, so you have no right to criticize me about that. Don't you feel bad for what you did to me? That you stopped me from going to university and made me work for my brother? No, not at all. Why should I feel bad about that? You made it sound like we made you get the job, but you could have refused. It was all up to you. Don't blame it on me just because I suggested you start planning for your future. Right. Why did I think you'd feel bad even a little about this when you kept interrupting whenever I st studied at home things and throw my notebooks into the trash? You also kept calling me to come home whenever I tried to study in the library in peace. Now that I think of it, you did nothing but interrupt my studying. So it's your fault I couldn't get good grades in high school. Well, I didn't get you needed to go to college. It would cost a lot of money. And I didn't want you to get in the way of your brother. How would I get in the way of Ian? I don't get it. He just didn't want to spend money on me. Why should I listen to a parent who doesn't even want to spend money on my education, but is happy to spoil my brother? I wouldn't mind if we never spoke to each other again. I've had enough of you. Do you realize what you're saying to your own father, young lady? Your dad and I raised you until you graduated high school. You should be more grateful to your father and I. I'm so glad Ian didn't turn out like you did. He's always didn't turn out like you did. He's always grateful and sweet. Plus, he's always had good grades, not like you. Ian is an intelligent person. I wouldn't disagree about that, even though I hate to agree with you. Right? He's perfect, isn't he? He's everything we hoped for in a son. And now he's in a well-known company in New York that pays very well. He knows how to make her parents proud unlike someone over here who only graduated from high school. You know, I don't have time to be wasting listening to you talk crap about me for something that you should be the one feeling guilty about. But you don't seem to have any remorse, and I've had it with you putting me down. I'm used to it by now. But I just don't want my time wasted on something like this. If you're done telling me what you want from me, then I'm gonna go. My head is going to explode. My head is going to explode if you talk to me any longer. What's with your attitude today? Don't be so rude. Like I said, be more careful with your words. Anyways, make sure you show up on Saturday and clean the house. No, I won't do that. I already told you, I am not your housekeeper. If you want one, hire one. Goodbye, Mom. Hey, you! Listen to me, young man. Come to our house on Saturday and clean, alright? You're late! When are you getting here? Your brother's already here. The house is still a mess and we need you here right now. Hey, I told you that I wasn't coming over. I have something more important to do. I wasn't asking for your opinion. That was an order for you to come to the house and clean. You ruined my plan to surprise Ian with a clean and tidy house. That's because you don't clean the house regularly. This wouldn't have happened if you maintained it clean and tidy. That's not my fault. I do clean the house. It just needed extra cleaning when Ian got here. But you didn't come to help me out. I can't do this all by myself. There's just too much to clean and organize. This is all your fault. Come here to apologize to me and your brother. Yeah, right. You never clean the house. It's always a huge mess. Why would I go clean a house that was turned into a mess by someone else? Clean it yourself. Stop trying to make me do it. You're so useless and unhelpful. How come it turned out like this? This was your chance to be useful for once. Cleaning is all you're good for. What else would you be for anyway? Hey, doesn't it, hey, doesn't it hurt you even a little to say something like that to your own son? I'm even starting to think that I was adopted. Anyway, I don't care. I don't want to waste my time and energy on someone who doesn't treat me right. And I couldn't care less about Ian coming back to the house being a mess. I'm sure he's used to it by now. But Ian is back. He's your family. Can't you do something nice for your family? What could be more important than being there for your family? What are you even doing? You really want to know? It's something much more important than cleaning your nasty old pigsty of a house. Language. I swear. 
It's like her being rude on purpose. Anyway, I'm sure it's not as important as you say. I went to visit my fiancé's family. I proposed to my girlfriend and I said yes. So she went to tell her parents that we're getting married. So, let me meeting my future in-laws versus cleaning your house, which is more important. What? You're getting married? Since when do you have a girlfriend? I've had a girlfriend for years. Thanks for noticing. Her parents are also going to be a part of my family, and I just met them. But they seem to be much nicer people than you. How is that more important than cleaning the house? Anyone can clean the house, but only I can go meet my fiancé's parents and announce that we're getting married. It was a very important event for me. Your fiancé is probably just some bum with a crap job and no college degree like you. People like you guys getting married isn't a cause for celebration. It's just another sign that the world is going down the toilet. You wish you were marrying someone actually decent enough to introduce to me and your dad. If you have time to dream, you should come to the house and clean. Wow. I thought you'd at least be happy that I was getting married. Thought you'd at least be happy that I was getting married. I guess I should have known better. That's fine. I'm glad to know you haven't changed much. I guess there won't be a need to come visit you with my fiance. I don't want to introduce her to you anyway. So you're really getting married? Go ahead! <laughs> Go get married as many times as you like without even asking us or even telling us about it. But don't throw a wedding, got it? We don't want to pay for your wedding. That's alright. I wasn't planning on getting you to pay for our wedding. Go use your money on Ian instead. That's what you wanted to do anyway, right? Spend all the money on him and not me. Yes, that's what we're going to do anyways. You don't have to tell us. <sighs> you really know how to push my buttons. You made me clean the house all by myself. Now I'm sore from doing all the cleaning. No way I'm doing that. I don't even want to touch you. It grosses me out just by imagining it. Yo. Starting today, you're no longer my mother. I don't know you anymore. We're strangers, okay? Don't speak to me ever again. What? Why are you mad at me? What did I do? I guess Ian is our only son after all. He's always been our favorite anyway. Go ahead and pretend to be a stranger from now on. Don't come crying to me when you start missing me. Yeah, do whatever you want. I don't care. Then that's what I'll do. I'm no longer your son, and you're not my mother anymore. Goodbye. Forever. Sure thing. Bye. Hey, why didn't you tell me? I didn't know your wife is a doctor. Um... Who is this? Do I even know you? Stop acting like you don't know who I am. It's me, your mother. The one who brought you into this world. I just heard from Ian that you married a doctor. You know my brother Ian? Who is this? Are you a stalker? This is creepy. Please, stay away from me. Okay, stop with that. You know I'm your mother. Your dad even spit his beer out when she heard that you married a doctor. She said there's no way you'd marry a doctor. Someone like you would never be able to marry someone worth a crap. That is worried you might be working as an expert to be meeting someone like that. Did you forget that I'm no longer your son? We're strangers now. You're my son. You were and always will be. No, I'm not. I told you that I'm finished with you guys. So that's it. We're strangers now. Have it your way, to be honest. I don't really care if we don't hear from you again. What I wanted to tell you is that you have no right marrying someone with that kind of status. So all you should do is give your wife away to Ian. What? That's just gross. Are you serious? No, you can't be. You want me to hand my wife away to Ian as if she was just an object with no thoughts or feelings? You can't be serious. You're way too ridiculous. I'm completely serious. Who wouldn't be happy marrying a doctor? I'm sure Ian will be happy when we introduce her to him. So get divorced and introduce her to Ian. Is that so? Just to be sure, I just asked Ian how he'd feel about that. He said there's no way she would marry one of my exes. That's just too weird and gross. You're lying. I'm certain he'd be happy about it. He's always done what we told him to do. 
I know. You're lying about being married to a doctor. You even lied to your brother. No doctor would want to be with someone like you anyway. You only have a high school degree and nothing more. Let me just tell you one thing that you don't know about me. What is it? I quit the job that you made me get when I was in high school. I quit as soon as I graduated. So don't think that I'm still working at that job. I'll never work at a dirty warehouse ever again. I only worked enough to start paying for some of the tuition to go to medical school. The rest I paid with student loans. Hold on, you never told us that. Why did you keep that a secret from us? Of course, I never told you that. Never told you that. Why would I tell you something like that? I didn't want you to get in the way of my studies again. You probably would do anything to stop me from becoming a doctor. Anyway, that's what I became after studying for five years without being interrupted at all by you. I know I do so much better without having you around. I was feeling bad for not getting good grades in high school. But I was able to get 4.0 just like Ian did in high school. I was so happy. A doctor? You really became a doctor? Yes, and that's how I met my wife. We both work on the same floor at the same hospital. She's a really kind and thoughtful person unlike you or dad. At first, it even felt weird to be treated so well because I was so used to how you treat me. You've caused serious emotional damage to me, you know that? Yes, we're happy to know we have two doctors in the family. You guys can take care of us when we grow old, that's amazing. Um, what are you saying? <laughs> Why would I have to take care of a stranger like you? You said you didn't care if I was no longer your son, so let's keep it that way. There's no going back, alright? I won't become your son again. You don't know me. No, I'll take it back. We're still mother and son. So you better come introduce your wife to us by the end of this month. Then I'll forgive you for all the things you did to us. What did I do to you? I never really said or did anything nearly as bad as you. Anyway, I'm not introducing my wife to you, so stop asking. We're not strangers. We're your parents and we have every right to meet our daughter-in-law. But you're no longer my parents. You even agree to that. I decided to live happily with my wife and that means I'll no longer have toxic people in my life. That includes you and dad. So I don't want to see you two ever again. You'd just be terrible grandparents even if we had kids anyway. There's no point in having you two in my life anymore. What? I'm not a toxic person. What did I ever do to you? All I did was raise you to become a successful doctor. No, I became a doctor despite you raising me not because of it. Oh, how the tables have turned. Do you know what Ian said? You're going to be in shock when you hear this. <laughs> when I told him that I was going to cut ties with you and dad, Ian said she was going to as well. And that was even before I told her about you trying to get, about you trying to get me to give away my wife. Hearing that just clenched it. I think he's going to tell you in person next time he comes to your house. Okay, you're lying again. He'd never say something like that. You're really terrible for saying that, you know that? You have no right to tell me that I'm terrible. I'm cutting ties with you and dad because you two are terrible. You don't really care about us. You only loved Ian for his good grades, good job, and good looks. But you never truly loved him unconditionally. You may have treated him better than you treated me, but even he is fed up with you guys. Anyway, I'll never forgive you for the way you treated me all my life and now it's time for that to end. I won't let you disrespect or hurt me anymore. It's about time for me to stand up for myself. Really, I should have done this wasted so many years being hurt by you and dad. Don't speak to me ever again after this, got it? No, don't say that, Alan. We still love you just as much as we love Ian. Can you at least tell Ian that we still love him so very much and we'd be crushed if he cut ties with us? I need him in my life or else I wouldn't know what to do with my life. He's everything to me. I need him to live so can you tell her not to do something like that to us? So you don't really care about me after all. You care more about Ian. Why would you think I'd help you even though you still can barely even fake caring about me? You should think more of how your words and actions might affect other people. 
I'll treat you better from now on. So please, convince your brother to continue being our lovely son. You can help us, right? We won't make fun of you or criticize you ever again. No, I'm... Ever again. No, I'm not helping you. You really are so selfish and stubborn. Don't show up in my life ever again. Please, Alan. Please forgive me. I'm so sorry for what you and your father have done to you. We never mean to make your life miserable or anything. Sorry? That's all you have to say? After years of neglect and indifference, a simple sorry is supposed to make it all better? It's too little too late, Linda. I can't keep subjecting myself to your toxic behavior. But Alan, please understand that your father and I never intended to hurt you. We made mistakes, and we deeply regret them. We were dealing with our own struggles and failed to realize the impact it had on you. We love you, and we want to make amends. Love? If your love for me was real, you would have shown it. I can't keep hoping for change when all I've received is disappointment. I deserve better than that. Alan, I understand that you're hurt and angry, and you have every right to feel that way. All I can do now is apologize and assure you that I am committed to making a change. I want to rebuild our relationship and be the mother you deserve. It's not enough, Linda. I need to prioritize my own well-being. I can't keep subjecting myself to the pain of being let down by you over and over again. I need to create a healthier environment for myself, one where I can thrive and be happy. I know it's hard for you to trust me right now, but please consider giving me another chance. I'm willing to work on myself, to listen to your needs, and to be there for you. I want to prove you that I can be a better parent. I'll change and become better. Better. You'll see. So please, help me out. You will never leave your parents like this, will you? Oh no, never again. Just get out of my sight. There's no other way for you to turn back. So don't even dare to beg me for help. Goodbye. No, Alan. You can't treat us like this. Alan! My phone kept ringing from constantly getting messages and calls from my parents. However, my brother Ian put an end to that when he told them that he's no longer their son either. Even though our parents kept comparing us to each other, we were always really close to each other. So I was really happy when I heard that he was coming back from New York and we met up all the time, just the two of us. My parents were in a grave shot from losing touch with both of their sons. My mother lost weight from, be mother lost weight from being too depressed to eat and my father became more aggressive towards my mother because it bothers him to see her so depressed. When I heard what happened to them from the neighbors, I was a little happy but scared at the same time. I really hope I never run into them somewhere or I don't know what will happen to me or to Ian. On a more positive note, my wife has recently got pregnant. Ian is so proud to become an uncle soon that he keeps talking to me about how happy he is every time he sees me. What's even happier is that my in-laws are nice people who are always there for us. They love me and my wife unconditionally. The kind of love I never got from my parents. I'm so happy with the life I have now. And I plan to become a much better father to my child than my parents were to me. I will always love my child unconditionally. Love my child unconditionally. <laughs>